Is that it? That's it. Final trip. Yeah, Joe? <laughs> you can bump all you want. Turn your corners crazy, man. Your three passengers won't even complain. All dead. All dead. All dead. <laughs> Let's go. Fellas? <laughs> Jonah, how you doing? <laughs> I entered the name Eugene Davis, a boyhood friend whose story I knew, not through hearsay, but because I lived it almost side by side with him, the same ghetto in which we both had been raised. Now I stand on the other side of the law as he passes into the limbo. Details of his crime have been amply traced in the newspapers, but here tonight I trace the events behind the act, for I knew them well. I remember that only eight months ago, on a Saturday night, Eugene and I had been together, and our small corner of the world was for the moment a warm and lovely place. <laughs> and they don't say that because they get ready to have their first baby. Don't you say that? You're scared of all. I think I'll have twins at once to get it over with. <laughs> yeah, but when she has the twins, then we got to worry about everything else that comes along with it. Like, you know, we got to worry about all the babies. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> <clears throat> Uh, I'm learning to sew and I'm going to make the baby some clothes. <laughs> My mother said, girl, you are going to make some baby clothes. <laughs> hey, come on, let's hit it. Let's hit it. Everybody's glasses up. Oh, I got an announcement to make. Oh, don't tell me you're pregnant too, hon, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, you are crazy. Look, so, Bob, and now she's going to have a baby. And eight months from now, I'll be happy to welcome my son with open arms. But right now, I got something else. Oh, well, uh, what makes you think it's going to be a boy? I'm gifted, man. <laughs> oh, brother. Oh, you can <laughs> Oh, 
Look, come on, Gene. The girls want to catch the flick. Make your announcement, oh, man. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, mm -hmm. Bob and I are going to have a car. We are. Yeah, I mean, you know, 15,000 miles, a year old. Joan and I looked at it today. No, he looked at it. Oh. I looked at the facts. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, how much it costs? Next to nothing. Jonah, how much is it? 2,000. I'm putting down. 500. Mm. Much to their regret. Why is that, honey? There are no money down lovers. They want interest on the whole 2,000. I'm putting down 500. Well, let's see now. That leaves 1,500, so insurance ought to be uh, about 100. So, say, 1,600 at 8% oh, a year. Don't that's figure, uh, honey. <laughs> one, seven, no, oh, about Seventeen twenty-eight altogether. Yeah. Now that ought to make your payments just about uh, seventy a month. Yeah. Right. Hey, I think you two ought to be able to manage that without having to cut down on baby food. Mm, well, it sounds okay. You know, I've always wanted to drive. <laughs> you not driving? I'm gonna learn right away. Gene, <laughs> baby, your mathematics are groovy. But in the used car business, it is semantics, not mathematics. I, I added up the whole facts. Balance on the car, 1500 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Insurance, $360. What kind of insurance is that? Yeah. $50 deductible for two years. Life insurance, health, accident, and disability. All required or no sale. Okay, now, let's shift to the real interest, which they were reluctant to come out and say. Well, they have to say, honey. It's the law. And that's right. Maybe not on used cars, which banks and fair interest companies will not finance, especially if you live in the ghetto. Now, I figure the interest to be something like 20%. Well, that's ridiculous. And yeah. also so true. So that brings that teeny weeny little old 1500 to a dubious total of $2,232. Notes, 93 a month. Oh, honey, let's get a new car. Look, this car I knew would cost $5,000. <laughs> it's a light new baby, one year old, and I'm getting it. Yeah, the price is jacked up, but I'm not paying a cent more than what Jonah figured out. That's, uh, that's it. That's the end of the talk. Come on, let's drink to the new car. Slightly used. Hey, buddy. Hey, what's up? Okay. The girls made it to the flick on time, so they'll phone us when they're ready to leave. How come you didn't go? What a Hollywood version of Vietnam. Are you kidding, man? <laughs> Shoot. Say, uh, what time are you go on duty? I got four hours to look at the spoils of war. Yeah, they're my babies. Yeah. Ah. Are these empty? Of course, man. the gun expert. Suppose you tell me what country they're from. Made in Italy. Hmm? Ah. Mm. Yeah. France. Mm. 
two lovely ladies from Germany. You got it together. Did you ever use any of these in Vietnam? Hmm? No, man. Just a rifle, huh? <laughs> Not even that. Hey, man, among all these medals, I see two purple hearts and two for sharpshooting. Yeah, that sharpshooting I did in boot camp. That's all the shooting I ever did. Man, heroes die earning medals like these. Yeah, I earned them, I guess, yeah. But uh, I didn't kill nobody. You know, I brought them over here because you asked me to. Hey, uh, man, you want to drink? No, ma'am, but I sure like to know how you got all these medals without killing. Man, you're a combat hero. <laughs> yeah, some people think that. <laughs> but I'm not. You know, it all started the uh, first time I faced the enemy. Man, I couldn't pull that trigger. I told the man about it, you know. He uh, didn't make no fuss. He said, something about, you know, the, all this talk about our being in Vietnam in the first place, that he didn't want to add to all the noise and the confusion by uh, making an issue out of my case. So what he did, he just quietly, quietly transferred me to the medical corps. Right there, I traded in my rifle for a stretcher and a shovel. <laughs> stretcher? <laughs> yeah, they didn't even bother to make me an official medic, man. <laughs> I was the all around helper. Now that shovel was for burial detail. I gave myself the rank of grave digger. <laughs> grave digger? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Corporal grave digger, that was me. <laughs> Man, you know, I hold out so many dead and wounded guys day and night that at times I was just ringing wet with blood and were none of mine. Well, how'd you get the medals? <laughs> Guess you say I got all wrapped up in my work. See, that war didn't mean nothing to me. All that senseless killing, shoo. So I thought only about my job. Salvaging the wounded, retrieving the dead. You know, I remember uh, one battle. During, during that battle, oh, it's a place, I can't remember the name of that place. Never could pronounce it. Uh, I hauled out dead bodies night and day. Man, I got so tired I was beat to the socks. I got so tired that uh, finally I just fell asleep among the dead. <laughs> and two days later, you know, man, I woke up in the base hospital. That commanding officer he says, uh, says, in addition to my nearly dying of pneumonia, I almost got myself buried. <laughs> <laughs> Corporal Grave. Digger. <laughs> Man, that's one hell of a rank. Hooray. <laughs> Man, got it together. Use Mr. Williams, the late charge is 50 cents a day, $15 a month. We told you that when you purchased the car. Well, it's 50 cents a day. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't care what other companies charge. That has nothing to do with us. Very well. We'll expect to see you in here by Saturday. No, I don't think so, George. We'll have to reject this postal worker. It's too hard to attach his check. We can't relinquish the right. It's our ace if we have to repossess. I agree, Bob. We deal in credit, not in cars. Seems, uh, I here. think that's all, Mr. Davis. Now, this is your sales contract, insurance policies, wage assignment. Let's take them over to Mr. Thomas. Well, good morning, Mr. Davis. Good to see you again. Won't you sit down? You look very good on paper. Mr. Davis, some perfume and some nylons for the wife. <laughs> and uh, for yourself, we put a, uh, a set of matching luggage and a case of ginger ale in the trunk of that fine car you're getting. Have you got any kids? Oh, that's too bad. We've got some great balloons for the kiddies here. Look at that. Isn't that a yeah, thing? Mr. Davis, uh, if you'll just sign these. This is your life insurance, your car insurance, and this is your health, accident, and disability. Handy thing, this disability clause, in case you're uh, laid up for any reason whatsoever. Your notes are paid for you until you're back on your feet again. Here, use my pen. I, I'd like to look these over. Uh -huh. Well, go right ahead, Mr. Davis. Go right ahead. That's the way 
to do it all the time. Listen, Mary, baby, uh, do me a favor, will you, sweetheart? Um, go to the file over there and get the uh, file for Jerome Kearns and these balloons in the way all the time. Listen, George, George, uh, would you get the keys to him for the Chevrolet? Yeah. He's got to take care of it. Okay, pal? Thanks a lot. <laughs> you take care of it, huh? Baby, baby pine. Uh, I'll make you later, huh? <laughs> We deal in credit, not in cars. These words of George Thomas could well serve as a caustic preamble when describing those who sell only on time, putting to extensive use the hidden claws and the visible calendar, and the two combining to make into a grim reality that phrase so often used upon the poor and the oppressed, the late charge. While it is human nature to sometimes pay more for something you really want, it is a human tragedy to pay for something you never get. Tragedy was a culminating word in the deal Eugene Davis made. For the dealers in the credit didn't bother to stop at a mere sale with outrageous interest rates. Oh no, they had things to rig to suck more blood from their victims. And it was this additional pressure applied month after month against the sensitive strings of Eugene Davis, which led to the nightmare that was on his way. His wife's pregnancy was very difficult, so my wife, Jean, was able to persuade them to move into our cramped place. Okay, I've got to go now. Okay? Well, listen, he's Barb, and I want you to talk to her, because she, she's kind of worried about Jean. Okay? All right, Barb. Hello? Mm-hmm. Well, Joan, I'm worried about it. Yes, that damn car again. Well, something is always wrong with it, and, and Jean is so mad. Well, the warranty was for only 30 days. And all he got out of that was a rebuilt carburetor. Well, he had to pay for the generator and... Yes! And two months later, he had to pay for something else. And now it's the transmission. And Gene said he wasn't going to pay it. Well, I know. But I can't help worrying. About Gene, not that lousy car. I wish you'd talk him into getting rid of it. Well, I just want Gene to be himself again. No, he's not at work. He hasn't been to work in two weeks. Mm-hmm. The car people garnish sheet his checks. Mm-hmm. Oh, Joan, I wish you would. <laughs> Thanks, here. Okay. Okay. Bye. Hi. Now look, before you tell me how mad you are, you gotta kiss me. Oh honey, what's the matter? Come on now, I'm your woman, you wanna talk about it? Uh, 
I'm mad as hell. Those folks knew that car needed fixing before they sold it to me. Telling you, them folks better fix that car. Honey. If that Davis person storms in here one more time, I'll, I'll have a fit. He will. He's out there now having it out with Bob, Mike, and the mechanics. You know, that car's been seven months of trouble. Well, it doesn't pay to buy a used car unless you know who used it. And if you ask me, that was used by a teenage saint. <laughs> it's the transmission of this time. You won't get another one for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Thomas, you scared the life out of me. <laughs> I'm sorry, girls. My cigar touched it all. You know, George, you really should play with other things. Hmm, well, I'm uh, sort of considering that, Miss McGlynn. How about lunch? Well, since you popped the question so dramatically, I simply can't refuse. Will it become a satisfactory agreement? That entirely depends upon Mr. Davis. He wants us to repair a car for which he refuses to pay. I'll pay when you fix the car. We have already been over backwards on this deal at a big loss to our service department. Well, if you only patched it up long enough for the warrants to run off. You see? We're far apart on this. You know, when I sell a car, I want the customer to be satisfied. Tell you what, Davis, I think we can arrange a rebuild job uh, with all new parts at cost. Well, uh, what do you say? Yeah, her cost of who? Uh, we'll uh, toss in the labor free uh, if you pay for the parts. Look, you already billed me $40 for late charges. You put that on the transmission. Mr. Davis, uh, Miss Weeks, give me uh, Mr. Davis's card. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Davis, at present, you owe us. George, I'm sorry. At present, you owe us for three months. And you've got three of my checks tied up. Which your employer is reluctant to send to us. However, the law is clear on this point. He will comply. Bob, do you mind if I cut in here? Help yourself. Mike, I think you have a customer out there. Oh, oh yeah, sure thing. <clears throat> Sit down, Mr. Davis. Now. Supposing that we just wipe the slate clean and start all over again. Oh. Well, we'll, uh, we'll refinance the entire deal. We'll give you a new contract, new terms, and the works. Uh, what is Mr. Davis's balance? Uh, 1682 plus 40 for late charges. That's uh, 1722. Uh, two. Good. Now, Mr. Davis, we'll tear up the old and we'll bring in the new. We'll release your paychecks. And we'll refinance the entire 1872, which of course includes 150 for the transmission. Now, what do you say to that? By 1872, you mean $1,872. Yes, Mr. Davis. And uh, when I get my new payment book and the car fixed, I'll owe you that much? Exactly. <laughs> but what are the terms? Now, your first payment won't come due until two months from now. How's that? How much are the payments? They're small. How much? Well, now with four full years to pay, and remember, before you were paying 93 a month, this new deal will cut that practically in half. How much are the payments? Well, it amounts to a, a rough 65.50 a month. Uh -huh. For four years. Well, that's very good, George. I had no idea it would be that low. That's $3,144. Well, now that's only a rough figure. It's a guide for the 65.50. That's still $3,144 for a car that costs $2,000. And I already paid you $1,000, and that makes this whole total $4,000. Mr. Davis, if I were you, I'd keep my eye on the $65.50 a month. Yes, Mr. Davis, it's a great deal. Now, what do you say? Is it 
Two o'clock in the morning, I'd ask Jonah to get up and get me some... Watermelon. <laughs> well, that mighty big pickle. Sue Bird, can you imagine getting out of your bed two o'clock in the morning, trying to find some watermelon? Only if it's for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, doctor else. said she probably won't be having that baby till Monday. Man, you're going to be a dad dad. This yeah. <laughs> way he's got two. <laughs> what was that? What? what? I thought I heard. Hey, come back here, damn you! Come back here! Hey, come back here! What happened? <laughs> they took the car. They just towed it away. Let them keep it, Gene. It's the best thing, really. Now you're through with them. Are we? Repossession's not the last word. <laughs> That's why that wage assignment. They're gonna take the car and make me pay for it too. They want blood. They're gonna squeeze and squeeze and squeeze until I got nothing left but a bad taste. Don't worry about it now, man. We'll figure out something by Monday. They're open on Sunday. Well, Mr. Davis, come in. Oh, hiya, Jim. Come How are you? Good to see you again. We, uh, we towed your car in. We've got it in the shop right now. Of course, the shop is closed today, but first thing Monday morning... Been thinking over our new deal, Mr. Davis? Yes, I have. Blocks and blood so chains won't tame Hurricane in my veins 